So, welcome everyone. This evening, we continue our 30 week Bible study title, The People of the Promise Kingdom Divide, covering 15 books in the Old Testament. This study covers a challenging but important period in Israel's history. Especially in the coming three months, three weeks, we are going to study two books from Jeremiah and Lamentation from the same author. So now, I invite you to turn your Bibles or follow the key verses on the screen. Furthermore, tell the people that is what the Lord says. See, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine or plague. But whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are besieging, you will live. They will escape with their lives. Before going to the passage, let's look to God in prayer. Sorry for that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence here tonight. We rejoice in the fact that you have called us to yourself even before we are formed in our mother's womb. Lord, now we ask you to teach and bless the word which is before us so that our lives should be transferred and also we could be able to influence the people around us. This is for your glory. This we pray it in Jesus' magnificent name. Amen. Unprecedented, unprecedented numbers of people are taking dangerous journeys across the borders and fleeing their homelands, seeing a better life in wealthy countries. Recent reports highlights migrant borders crossing in the fiscal year topped and breaking previous records according to UN refugee agency figures. Why? Why are so many people being driven away from their families, friends and neighborhoods? Devastating wars have contributed to the rise. Conflict and violence, persecution and human rights violations are driving more and more men, women and children for their homes. Today, as we begin our study on Jeremiah, strikingly, Jeremiah's prophecy is to stay in his homeland was to face sword, famine, and pestilence. On the other hand, to live and be in exile in the foreign country was to build homes and prosper. And true to his word, the Lord moved in mercy and plants the seeds of new life in the midst of death and destruction to those who put their trust in him. So for more details, let's move into our lesson. So here is our outline. The call to costly obedience and the experience of costly obedience. First division, the call to costly obedience. Second division, the experience of costly obedience. The book of Jeremiah is the second book of the major prophets in the Old Testament after the book of Isaiah. 
the time of the prophet jeremiah was about 100 years after the time of isaiah the prophet and also the second largest book in the bible behind psalms jeremiah is sometimes referred to as the weeping prophet this designation comes from his tender concern about his countrymen impending punishment when the people rejected his warning from god to repent he said i will weep in secret because of your pride the prophet also had a plenty to weep about because of the way he was treated his family members turned against him and his message from god was rejected jeremiah is also called the lonely prophet because he was commanded by the lord not to marry this was to be a vivid warning and sign to judah that happy and normal times were soon to end with the people captivity and exile and jeremiah served as one of god's prophets through the rule of the five kings kings of judah so with this backdrop let's turn to our lesson so let me say on at the outset that reading jeremiah is hot for several reasons the prophecy of jeremiah is a collection of his messages interspersed with certain historical narrative which provides background next it does not proceed chronologically but there is a moral progress throughout the book that which we are going to follow today the word of jeremiah son of hilkia one of the prefect one of the priests at antok in the territory of benjamin the prophet jeremiah came from a priestly family his father name was hilkia he lived in anathoth in the tribal land of benjamin about 5 kilometers of north of jerusalem the word of the lord came to him in the 13th year of the reign of josiah son of amon king of judah in the 13th year of king josiah of judah god called jeremiah when he was still a youth his ministry spanned more than 50 years king josiah as we have read in the chronicles and second kings has brought many needed spiritual reforms into judah after which subsequent kings reverted to flagrant idol worship and rebellion against god everyone everyone was doing only what was right in their own eyes the situation is escalated until god's judgment fell under king jedekia the babylonians invaded invaded the country and conquered and burnt jerusalem and it's within this historical and geopolitical context that god called jeremiah the word of the lord came to me saying before i formed you in the womb i knew you before you were born i set you apart i appointed you as the prophet to the nations what a remarkable revelation to this young man long before jeremiah was even conceived that through the generations of the past god has begun to work apostle paul recognized this truth when he wrote that god who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace think of that apostle paul who persecuted the church before he was saved was actually set apart by god for the ministry before he was born and about the area of the service ephesians chapter 2 says for we are god's work in workmanship created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us 
to do see friends each one is unique prepared of god our sovereign lord predetermined our calling we are not just a random of accumulation of molecules that came together by chance we are known we are formed and we are set apart and we are appointed by a sovereign god jeremiah also was called a prophet to the nations not a priest like the his father or his grandfather friends god knows where he wants you if you are looking for your calling spend time in god's word and worship ask the lord for his guidance and direction and you will find your spiritual led calling alas sovereign lord i do not know how to speak i am too young like moses god once god calls jeremiah and commissions him to engage in a daunting work jeremiah resists he thinks his relative youth and his lack of eloquence ruled him out from the ministry to which god is calling him so what was the lord's answer to jeremiah <clears throat> the lord said do not say i am too young you must go to everyone i send you to and to and say whatever i commanded you do not be afraid of them for i am with you and i will rescue you the lord immediately addresses the two impediments jeremiah raised youth and lack of eloquence strikingly the lord does not promise to make jeremiah wiser than his years to enhance to enhance his vocabulary or to render him into a silver tongue preacher any international speaker instead god simply promises to be with him and to deliver him friends when god calls us to task he does not give us a road map to follow and then leave us to our resources no god walks with us his presence gives us the strength to stand in the face of every assault jesus felt that same presence he and the father were one he could go on because god walked with him friends what a different it makes knowing that when we are being sent that we have a traveling companion then the lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me i have put my words in your mouth see verses 9 and 10 the essence of this call to jeremiah since the lord touches his mouth and the words of jeremiah will be the lord's words to give him the authority that the lord brings with it see today i appointed you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant this is an interesting commission on several levels it is both destructive and constructive then he delivers god's first message it may uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow and at other times it was a message to build to give hope so jeremiah was set in the midst of death and destruction but god said he would plant a hope and a healing ultimately that hope is the coming of jesus christ to seek and save the lost in verses 11 to 19 god conveys to us jeremiah's first words from the lord the lord shows jeremiah two visions and interprets them for him first the almond branch the parallel seems to be that just as an almond tree is the first to blossom and show new life in spring so the decisive turning point for the accomplishment of the lord word is lord himself who watches over his words 
next the second vision is of a boiling pot the pot is about to spill boiling liquid which corresponds to the disaster that is about to come up on the land of judah from the mysterious enemy from the north later identified as babylon the reason for the judgment was israel's idolatry and rebellion against god's righteous will get yourself ready stand up and say to them god was expecting immediate action from jeremiah today i have made you a fortified city an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land against the kings of judah its officials its priests and the people of the land notice the architectural terms a fortified city an iron pillar a bronze wall they are all solid and unshakable these are the very characteristic that the people of judah will expect of jerusalem god's own city instead they are the characteristics of the prophet jeremiah through whom god announces judgment on jerusalem under leaders they will fight against you but will not overcome for i am with you and i will rescue you god reassured jeremiah attack you they will overcome you they can't friends the person who stands with god will prevail someone rightly said one plus god is a majority alone we are helpless with god we will prevail jesus told his disciples they would face opposition there would be people who would not like their message and remaining faithful to god might cost them a great deal but he was reminding them to remain faithful because god would work through them even in the hard times sanctification god's call vision and grace sustained jeremiah and accomplished his purposes within him the personal suffering god allowed jeremiah to endure molded his character and taught him to depend on god sanctification is the process by which god the holy spirit reveals sin prompts faith and empowers obedience in the days and the moments of believers life god uses life circumstances his word fellowship with the believers and every part of daily life to weave his resurrection power into the thoughts and actions of his children no one can become more like jesus or spiritually mature without god's active work of sanctification so this takes us to the first principle god equips his children for whatever his call demands god equips his children for whatever his call demands <clears throat> dear brothers in christ our text this evening gives us a glimpse into the first commission service this mission is not easy or even truly socially rewarding since jeremiah goes through many hardships and faces oppression and misunderstanding yet he obeys the lot and overcomes his fears to realize the divine plan friend we are living in a time of crisis when truth stumbles in the streets friend will you choose to retreat from speaking the truth in love or will you stand in the power of 
our sovereign God against the destructive powers of darkness. Jesus obeyed. His heart, his heart was a willing and obedient heart. He always did what his father directed. There was no hesitation, no questioning, no circumventing. Only immediate action. Friend, has God called you? Then he will fulfill his purpose in you. He will equip you. He will enable you. He will protect you. He will accompany you. Or are you obeying his commands? Then he is with you to protect you. Or are you sharing the word? Then he will accomplish his purposes. No matter how the people respond. God calls his children to share his burdens, to speak his message, and to trust him with the results. So, now we move to our second division. The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the, proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. Jeremiah immediately obeyed God's call and began proclaiming judgment on his own people. No pro prophet had a tougher assignment than Jeremiah. Can you imagine? Spending 40 years of your life telling people that they will be destroyed. If they don't repair, repent. It's not an easy message. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord. Chapter 2 begins with uh, good news. God looked back on the early years of the nation as a honeymoon period. God lovingly brought his people out of Egypt and through the Red Sea. And he has provided for them in the wilderness and protected them from their enemies. But when they came to the land, they left their first law and turned to the gods of the pagan nations around them. That means the honeymoon, is, honeymoon was over. What fault did your fathers find in me that they stayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. And Jeremiah chapter 3 says, But like a woman unfaithful to her husband, so you, Israel, have been unfaithful to me. The Lord asked Israel, what was the reason for forsaking him? He had provided for them, protected them in the wilderness, and he had brought them into fruitful land. Now, not only the people have turned away from the Lord, but they have chosen idols. So, then, as a result of the people's guilt, Jeremiah declared the first notions of judgments to come. This is what we read in today's lesson, question number seven, where Jeremiah declared from the north, Disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land, free from safety without a delay. For I am bringing the disaster from the north, even terrible destruction. Look, an army is coming from the land of the north, a great nation of being seated up from the ends of the earth. They come like men in the water battle formation to attack you. See, therefore, the Lord, the Lord Almighty says this, because ye have not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Jeremiah named Nebuchadnezzar as the king from the north that would conquer Judah. The people would be enslaved for 70 years. Jeremiah spoke God's message as he warned of judgment but also promised hope. 
returned faithful to Israel. Do you see in these verses how he is reaching out after these people? Return, he says, come back. It's not too late. I will restore you. I will feed you. I will open your eyes. You will not have to walk in ignorance and darkness again. I will heal your faithfulness. The message of God sent to the people where his prophet was that the people needed to return to God. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed and if that nation I want defense of its evil, then I will relent and not leave, inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And verses 9 to 10, that if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to build up the plant, to build up and plant it, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I have intended to do for it. See, verses 7 to 8 offers God's willingness to relent from judgment if a nation turned away from sin unto him. And in the same chapter, in the same passage, verses 9 to 10, God reminds us that the opposite is also true. Friends, one of the remarkable principles of God is he is merciful, long-suffering in dealing with the sins and ignorance of man. But he will not endure their sins forever. Furthermore, tell the people, this is what the Lord says. See, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine or plague. But whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are besieging you will live. They will escape with their lives. Jeremiah called the wayward people to repent even as he warned, he warned of pending judgment. Here verses 8 to 9 issues an invitation to choose the way of life rather than the way of death encouraging them to surrender to the Babylonians in acceptance of God's prophesied judgment. Jeremiah's relentless warnings and disclosure of coming disaster were aimed at turning the people back to God. God truly longs for the wavered people to turn to him from their sin and receive the salvation. God's heart is compassionate and gracious toward the sinners. Oh, my anguish, my anguish, I have writhed in pain, oh, the agony of my heart. Jeremiah pleaded with the people to repent, but they refused. And as a result, Jeremiah was heartbroken, not for himself, but for his people, who has rejected their God. And chapter 9, verse 1 mentions, that Jeremiah wept over the trauma experienced by his people. In these verses, Jeremiah delivered his message of coming judgment with personal empathy and a very heavy heart. Then, as we fast forward, fast forward to the book, we see that Jeremiah experienced not only his costly obedience to God, he also experienced very painful realities, endured as he lived before, during, and after the fall of Jerusalem. Chapter 37, verse 2, neither the king nor his attendants, nor the people of the land paid any attention to the words of the Lord had spoken through Jeremiah the prophet. See? And then, verse, chapters 11 and Chapter In the same chapter, verses 11 to 13, but when he reached 
the benjamin gate the captain of the guard arrested him and said you are deserting to the babylonians next then in chapter chapter 38 they lowered jeremia by ropes into the cistern it had no water in it only mud and jeremia sank down into, into the mud see jeremia was preaching the word of the lord the king's officials did not like his message so they threw him in empty muddy cistern and left him there to die and in 586 bc the babylonians captured judah jeremiah personally endured the very disaster the very devastation he had been warning the people for 40 long years but at the same time nobody loved the nation of israel more deeply than jeremiah nobody grieved, grieved over their sinful state more deeply than jeremiah he was a true patriot but was falsely accused and imprisoned as a traitor jeremia was a man of conviction who stood by god's revelation to him despite whatever pressure was exerted by people in high places to try to get him to compromise remnant of judah the lord has told you do not go to egypt be sure of this i warn you today when the babylonians captured judah and deported the jewish people to babylon only a remnant of poor judeans were left in the land to care for and cultivate it by the way the babylonians released the prophet jeremiah during that time and gave him a choice to to remain in judah or immigrate to babylon but jeremiah chose to remain to be with his people god's reply now <clears throat> what transpired next reveals that god is never unwilling to provide guidance even when he knows the people will not follow it the remnant decided to flee to egypt before doing so however they asked jeremiah to pray for god's will and guidance on their decision but the israelites were like many of us today who dislike what god says because his word contradicts their own desires 10 days later the lord answered jeremiah's prayer the news was good the judeans were told to stay in the promised land and if they obeyed god would do three things he would plant them in the land and not pluck them pluck them up and number 2 he will manifest his presence and power preserving them preserving them from babylonian attack and number 3 he will show mercy and compassion god also included a strong warning if the remnant, if the remnant disobeyed the lord and fled to egypt everyone would be destroyed by the sword famine and pestilence sadly the remnant did not know the babylonians would soon invade egypt but jeremiah reemphasized that this is this warning is from the lord all the arrogant men said to jeremiah you are lying the lord our god has not sent you to say you must not go to egypt to settle there unfortunately the remnant that survives the destruction they did not get the point 
they continued to rebel against God and defamed Jeremiah's character by calling him a liar and saying his message was untrue. They also falsely accused Baruch, Jeremiah's scribe and secretary, of influencing Jeremiah to halt their escape and of secretly working a spy for Babylon in order to put them to death or take them captive. So the remnant of Judah fled to Egypt, taking Jeremiah with them. In their stubbornness, the Judeans chose to do things their way and they paid a heavy price for their decision. And so Jeremiah was forced to finish out his last days in the captivity in Egypt. And that's essentially the end of Jeremiah's life. Scattered throughout the latter part of the book, we also find some examples of faithful people besides Jeremiah. In chapter 35, we learn about the Rechabites who remain loyal to their father's covenant. Interestingly enough, they are not Israelites, who was a Midianite, that is Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. Then we read about Ebed Melech, who is an Ethiopian. He saves Jeremiah from the dungeon. Finally, we read about Baruch, who is a scribe for Jeremiah. He struggles with all that is going on and God speaks plainly to him. Friends, <clears throat> it is appropriate to close this session with God's promise as in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8, do not be afraid of them for I am with you and I will rescue you. God promised to be with Jeremiah and to deliver him. Friends, Jeremiah the prophet can be a role model for us, showing that even when our mission is hot, he is still our, it is still our job to do and the Lord will carry us through it and we shall learn, learn to trust him in his power. So this takes us to the final principle God calls his children to share his burdens, fix, fix his message, and trust him with the results. God calls his children to share his burdens, speak his message, and trust him with his results. So, dear beloved, Jeremiah's message for us today, following God is costly. God's servants must boldly preach a message of warning and repentance to the nations and also a message of comfort and hope to those who fear God and to do his will. This message is also called the gospel of the kingdom and we need to understand it and respond. Jeremiah's message fell largely on deaf ears Few responded. Those few who did preserve their own lives and those of their loved ones. Now, the question is, how, how will you respond? Are there any compromises to the truth you have made because of how it might be received by others? Or what challenges do you face when living the kind of life the Lord desires and calls you to, to live according to his word. Jeremiah was often inspired to look behind the distressing scenes of the present to the hope of a glorious future. But man is impressioned by his sinful nature and blind to what is actually best. Guide God graciously gives us his word to bring life-giving encouragement and facing trials and tribulations. This new life in him can be costly, but does not compare to the glorious riches and joy of knowing and serving our King of Kings. Friend, 
have you surrendered your life to jesus christ and received new life in him and what difference has trusting christ made you to compare your new life with your old life let's bow down before the lord our father thank you for this wonderful lesson we pray that we will find the secret of the courage of this young man the prophet jeremiah to stand in the day of national danger and disaster and to be faithful to our calling lord help us to learn how to do this thank you for the preparations you have given us through the generations we had gone before us and now lord may we pass this on to the generations who follow that they may stand and be faithful this we pray it in jesus magnificent name amen thank you friends class has been dismissed we are going to meet next week at the same time wish you all good week